I was playtesting the new evolution mechanics I was implementing, and I approached a potential mate, something I've done a thousand times to get into the evolution screen. But then I noticed there's no mating option this time. What happened? Then I noticed the creature's title. This wasn't my species anymore. I had branched off. For the first time in this game's history, I had become something different than what came before. I was now beyond these inferior mates. These under-evolved beings could never understand my- and it ate my butt. But that means the evolution feature works now. So how does this game handle evolution? I knew early on I didn't want a creature creator. That's a tool for making your favorite Care Bear character, not for simulating evolution. Evolution doesn't just stick on a new pair of arms, it creates tiny changes, mostly to existing structures, until they start to do something very different. I already have ways to make mutations to a certain species based on the mutation strategies. I also have an easy structure for determining what mutations might be useful to a player species, while they'll still be in the wheelhouse of what Auto Evo might have done to that species, were it not the player's control. Introducing the Mish based Creature Creator. Browse through all the paths where your creature gets at least a passing score, or almost good, and at every stage you can see your species with that Mish's particular mutations applied. It is the furthest possible thing from Will Wright's original vision when he made Spore. And I think that's why Will Wright would be proud. With all this focus on evolution and multi-generational gameplay, I needed to find a way to test it faster. My first idea as a stopgap was to modify the game to fill the environment with just potential mates so you could always get through a life cycle faster. It turns out this is a surprisingly viable game mode. Welcome to Evolution Dating Simulator. Seduce waifus. Oh la la. Consume waifus. Om nom nom. Lay eggs in front of waifus. Get eaten by the waifus. The omelet is you. But there are some things in this world that no army of cannibal insect girlfriends is going to do for you. If I wanted to go further, I was going to need to implement a save system. Now saving and loading is always a pain to code, but with Mishas in particular, as you might imagine, we're looking at some very chaotic structures here with a lot of different classes, interfaces, inheritance. Um, if you don't know what that means, you're lucky. So I knew I was not interested in trying to store a Mish mid-update. Instead, any auto evo in progress, I just throw out. I just want to store the state of what's already been calculated from the last run. The physical conditions of the patch, and the current list of species. Since the function for generating a Mish tree from a patch is referentially transparent, and the procedure for inserting a species is deterministic, I thought I was safe to load the game by just using the patch to regenerate the miches, and then insert all the saved species, one by one, into the miche. Instead, I would save a lush jungle, and load a barren world covered in only the simplest of grasses. It turns out the reason this happened is actually the same as why this wouldn't work in the real world. Biology quiz. Can you guess why this is? My fatal assumption was assuming that ecosystems are linear. If you pack a forest in a box, you can't just put it all back because the newly empty dirt is no longer survivable to most of the individual species. My simulation is already complex enough that some of the Mishas are generated based on what species are already there, so if you start with nothing, you get almost nothing. Fortunately, it's not advanced enough to ask where in the Mish these species were previously before making the new one so I can just modify my function to take a list of existing species and use that for new Mish creation, and we're all good for now. And with that, as well as several days of bug fixing, saving and loading is finally complete. Games of Atoms and Time can go on as long as they have to. Next up, I want to expand the library of parts that organisms can evolve, and the ways these can combine, so it doesn't look like this whole engine can't make anything besides a million slight variants of one green ant.